Hello YouTube and welcome back. This is video number two that I shot with Lakesby Jr. He came by, we turned the camera on and we just started going, started talking about friction, new technologies, pistons, and everything. So we got a long video. I'm breaking it apart into some small videos. We had one last week, um, call it Making Chili with Lakesby Jr. We weren't really making chili, and a lot of people were going, I thought I was going to look at a, a chili recipe. We were, so in making good chili, making good brisket, whatever you're making, we need ingredients. And we need the right ingredients to have the right outcome. So what are we doing now? We're getting the right ingredients ready for this hemi. So that being said, let's get the video going, and we're going to divide it all up. So let's get going. Come on. Chili. Yeah, and the 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 hone. Let's talk about the, about the, the hone itself. Yes. The, so... Um, it serves two purposes, okay? So, so the hone actually holds oil in there. Yeah, the cross does, correct. Yeah. But it, the, 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 the thing that we always cared about, we didn't really care about the second part, and I shouldn't say, but talking about, honestly, we grew up in the machine shop world, and you want to get stuff out, and it has no, 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 no comeback, no warranties. The thing you want to go about is ring seal. Yep, you, you want to seal up sooner rather than later. Yes. Yeah, and so we, we we were concerned about ring seal, um, but the, the, the finish is what helps the ring seal. It was what helps the ring seal. Back right. in the day, we had to leave a, a cylinder finish a little bit rougher. It was abrasive. That's what actually made it the ring to the cylinder. And right. it holds oil, so since it's holding oil in there, it can last longer. So there was a fine art of what's rough enough to seal fast and not too rough that uh, actually, you know, your your rings aren't going to last long. Let's call so, it locks of the three bears, right? Yeah, you, yeah. You, not too hot, not too cold. You want it just right. Just right. So you're trying to find that just right, and you were doing it based on the ring material and the coating you had at the time. And so as things have changed and evolved, you have to evolve that and what's, what's right. And it's time for us to evolve. That's the the the, the, the similar finishes have gotten to more. It's it's uh, for sure. Just 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 one finish ain't gonna ain't gonna fit all. But no. but before we had three finishes that could pretty much. That's not it anymore. So uh, and that's just one aspect, right? That's one small thing that's evolved in engine technology mm -hmm. is the evolution of the ring materials and coatings and the related surface finishes that go along with that. That's just one thing in these engines that's evolved that helps make them more durable, more powerful. I mean, even just from the piston ring perspective, back to the size, going from the 564, 564, 316th rings down to where a one millimeter, one millimeter, two millimeter ring package is what I would recommend any, anybody for a street and, and, car and anymore. That's like I said, anybody. That's just like, a, like a, you know, thick piece of cardboard. It's not very, very, very thick. And you would think it's that thin how can it still hold? It's amazing what they can do with rings these days. I mean, just so thin, but yet they'll, they'll last for 200,000 miles. I mean, well, you think about this. If you had a piece of cast iron and you dropped it, it's probably going to break. Uh, if you have the same piece of stainless steel and you drop it, it's not going to break. You know, the, the material technology and the coating technology has come so far in the last few decades, you know, uh, we did that video recently about my dad's old engine. It was a mm, yeah, you know, 2002 I, NASCAR engine. And sure enough, 043 ductile molly top ring and 1.5 millimeter second ring, three millimeter oil ring. And that was thin, state of the art stuff at the back, time, back then. Well, today, those same guys are running a 0.5 millimeter top ring. So when I say a one millimeter ring is like a streetcar engine, I'm not even exaggerating. That's twice the thickness of what a NASCAR ring is. So, uh, so it's, it's going to be interesting to see the gains of of, of that. I know you're, you're you're freshening it up. Yeah. And just are you are you going to do one that is nothing but a ring change? So we're going to do everything at once. So this is a, okay. we only have like a limited window. So. We're going to change the cam. We're going to change the rings and the pistons. We're going to change a whole bunch of stuff. But the thing is, it's all going to be inside. We're not changing the oil pump. We're not changing the oil not pan. The we're not changing the heads. We're not changing the manifold. Everything on the outside of the engine will look the exact same because it's going to bolt right back into that car. So you're still flowing the exact same amount of air. You're, it's still the same animal. The same it's animal. Just, it's just an efficient we're, one. We're just going to try to change all the internals, to, like you said, to make them more efficient. We're going to... You know, talking to the guys at Comp Cams about, okay, what cam grinds we put in here? 
What can we do for valve springs? I mean, I, mean, I look at those old valve springs back then. Man, they were monsters we, compared yes, to we Yes, we could go on springs just alone. I mean, I love the Beehive Spring. It was a different world back then. Yeah. And and it is not that world anymore. Like, you don't need that much spring No, in fact, anymore. you want to get... you. Yeah. Right. That I is don't know how much horsepower is going to be in those springs, but it's going to be a bunch. All, all we cared about a long, a long time ago was high RPM valve float. And yep. we and, and in, our, in our mind, the valve float tears up parts, and that's all we care. So put the, uh, as much spring pressure as we could. Overkill. Yeah. Everything was overkill on spring pressure. Yeah, not not anymore. Which is it's, one reason why the engine was down so far on power, is because if, if you ever turn a motor for 20 over, years, when you put the put those big it, monsters on yes. there, it killed all the valve seats. So turn a motor over, and as you start putting the springs on and the rockers on, oh. Oh. And and if you got the 300 pounds of spring pressure times 16, I mean, you just think about it. it. There's there's more loss in 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 horsepower just turning the valve train. Oh, I mean, yeah. just to give you some round numbers. So those valve springs installed pressure was about 300 pounds on the seat, right? Which some of that that's kind of crazy. But they're racing roller cams, two valve engines in NASCAR today. Ooh, man, there's some guys who are a little bit less than a hundred. I was going to say some because the lifters, we we can we could go on in a series of videos just on new new technologies. But the the lifter issue, the the new comp stuff, the one one of the last winches that I did, I think it was a hundred, uh, no no more than 110 pounds on the seat. I right. Mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean. So we can literally cut the seat pressure in half. Th that was a, a, a and still be okay. Yeah, th that was a Z28 Camaro had 100 pounds on the seat when it came from the factory. Right. I mean, that was a unheard of kind of. We 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 would yes. Now now. So, and that's all about changing the push rods, yeah. changing the rocker ratios. All well, has to do with friction. Getting, getting every, just, and the dynamics of all those things. So that's what's kind of neat is to see the evolution of race technology and what's available for people today because. I mean, literally what was state-of-the-art in NASCAR 20 years ago, anybody can buy the day. And there's actually even better stuff that you can buy the day. Like I said, you go to the dealer and buy an Eco, but I really do love that engine. But uh, yeah, you, you, just the regular stock technology that you just buy today in an average engine mm -hmm. is an amazing, just, uh, yeah, the engines of today are race engines right out of the box. I mean, they're just, oh, yeah. they, a lot they of that all the technology, technology in is, it. right? If you look at the, the new V8 engine that uh, Chevy's coming out with for the Corvette, the twin overhead cam piece. Man, that's, that's straight up race motor right there. I think it's got a 0.8 millimeter top ring in it. That's a Formula One engine. Just in oh, it, 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 it's it's really cool stuff to see what the OEMs are embracing. And they're, they're, they're bringing race technology to the market. And it's not the old school trade-off. That's the To me, that's the best part of all this. Is that in the old days, it was, well, you want to make a lot of horsepower. It's like a top fuel car. Well, it won't last very long. Yeah. Right, you had to trade off, right? If I want to make a lot of power, well, my stuff's going to blow up. I'm putting a new, a, a new set of pistons every run. So Right. Uh, well, you don't have to do that anymore. No. That That's not a trade-off that has to be made. You can get parts that are lighter, stronger, and more durable. You don't have to trade power for longevity. You can actually get both in a lot of cases if you know what questions to ask on the front side and do your homework and figure out the right combination because i'm sure you see it all the time you know people go buy the best parts but they're not the right parts for the combination all right we're back hope you've enjoyed it it's a small video short video and i'm going to have a series of these videos hit the like and subscribe leave me a comment tell your buds tell your friends there's going to be a lot of great video it was Extremely entertaining for me. Um, me and Lake can just go on for hours. At the end, there's going to be a bonus. When we're done with this series, I'm going to just run the whole thing unedited. It, it, it's a hoot. It is. So, all right. As for me, I'm getting back to work, and we'll see you on the next one.